I hear it all the time that there are no good deals to fix and flip in Massachusetts. But today I want to show you that those deals do exist. We bought a condo that is the perfect fix and flip project for anyone experienced or anyone starting out. The credit for this deal though goes to Kayan. He's a real estate agent on our team and he was the one that connected with the seller by cold calling a probate list. You did all the steps to get us this deal. So the reason I wanted to bring you in, honestly more than anything, is to share with anyone watching that anyone can find the deal, right? Mm -hmm. For anyone watching, give a quick intro like what do you do on a daily basis, what have you done in real estate, and then we'll jump into the deal. Typically what I do is um, I try to do some cold callings uh, throughout the day. I block some time um, of my day, maybe an hour or two, yeah. just to try to get some cold calls in. Uh, I've tried multiple lists before. I tried uh, probate lists. I tried for sale by owners. I tried, you know, all, basically all of them. Yeah. But the one that worked for this deal was a probate. Yeah, uh, you know what's important I think to share is the fact that you are an agent, right? So you think as an agent, you're working with buyers and sellers. Investing is a little different, right? Yeah. So what was the mindset like, you know, to actually sit down and be like, you know what, I'm gonna put up with this because I really wanna make a deal happen here. Well, I hear um, all the time, you know, people saying that cold calling works. Right. And <laughs> I think I needed to see it to believe it. Yeah. And I've tried, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cold calls and I've gotten appointments before. Uh, but I always go with the mindset that I go for either a listing or uh, for a buyer's appointment. A buyer's appointment. It's not many times that I go with the mindset of an acquisition exactly. because in my mind, I'm wired to do just listing appointments yeah. to get this, the, the property to be sold. Yeah. And let's talk about the probate lead. So we created a probate list. We do it all the time. We have actually a virtual assistant that helps us create a list. And, and actually going back a little bit, probate, what that means, right? It's, it's just a legal process that when someone passes away and they have an estate, right? They have real estate or their you know, bank account. The court has to appoint a personal representative, right? To right. take care of the estate. The whole idea with probate is that someone inherits real estate there and someone passed away, they're probably going to sell that most of the times. So if they want to sell it, well, we are buying real estate, so it's a perfect fit, right? So we want to call and offer our service. Hey, yeah. we're cash buyers. Um, so probate list works well. We go on the uh, court system online, right? And pull all that list. It's time consuming, but it works great for us. So that was, that was done for you, right? Yeah. I think so it was on a spreadsheet. And then you sat down, tell me more, like what happened? So you got the name, you got the phone number. Basically, I cold called uh, yeah. the seller. Uh, they picked up the phone and they said that they were interested in selling. I mean, right away, right? Right away. Uh, I'm just curious, what does that, because a lot of people, like when we talk about cold calling, they're asking me like, what do you say on the phone? Like thinking that I'm saying something magical to convince somebody. Yeah. What did you say? First I called and I said, you know, hello, uh, <laughs> my name is Kayan. I work with White Acre Properties and I'm looking for the owner of such, you know, property. property. Uh -huh. uh, they said they are going to be the ones that are the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go to them and I just ask. Are you interested in selling at any point? I am. Yeah. Uh, I am thinking on selling it, but I live out of state. So that was one thing that uh, caught me a little bit off guard because I didn't know it was my first time dealing with someone right. living out of state. All right. Uh, but it came to mind that they are actually coming to town right. the week after our it's conversation. Perfect time. So they already had, yeah, they already had the, uh, uh, yeah. the plans to come to town. Yeah. I ended up connecting with them. They said they had other people that were interested in the property. Yeah. And I told them, look, I'm a real estate agent. I work with an investor that they can give you a cash offer Love or it. we can put it on the market or I can see other options. I want to go in there, meet with you so I can give you all the options and then you can decide which one you know, works best for you. Yeah. So you already were thinking of the seller appointment, like the face-to-face -face seller appointment, right? Yeah. And that's a big one because a lot of people want to rush through the sale process and do it over the phone. Mm -hmm. And this would have been the perfect scenario because you knew the person was out of state and you, can have, you could have been like, well, let me get your price over the phone. Let mm -hmm. me send you a contract over the phone, right? And really not, first of all, not build the report that happens when you're meeting face-to-face, -face, right? The personal right. interaction. Two, maybe, you know, I don't know if you'd have enough time to find out what their pain points are. What is, you know, what, what are they struggling with? What, the, what are they trying to accomplish, right? right. So by, by trying to actually schedule a time to meet in person, it opens the opportunity to talk more, right? For you to ask questions. You know, what are you looking to sell it for? How much, 
not only price but timeline you know what's what's important to you in the sale of the property right all those i mean all of that is important yeah how many people before that said no take me off the list don't call me oh countless right. uh, honestly I, I would say maybe a hundred yeah uh to get one yes yes it's, uh, it, you know yeah but i always hear people saying you know the more no's you get the closer you are to a yes exactly right the person came to massachusetts you guys met here at the property yep tell me about that how was that face-to-face -face meeting you know anything important there to share when I met with the sellers, I, again, came to mind with a mindset of a listing, a listing uh, appointment. Right. And I went over comps with them. I went over about the options. Mm -hmm. But I threw it in there saying, look, I also work closely with an investor that they would be able to give you a cash offer. Love it, yeah. Obviously, it's going to be lower than what you could potentially get in a listing, but it involves a lot less work. Do you remember what the listing was for? I know what we paid for it, but what yeah. was the listing price? For this condo, I believe we were planning on listing at somewhere around 179, 189. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it entitled, you know, cleaning the place up, uh, getting maybe some staging going, yeah. uh, listing the property, having open houses, having private showings. Waiting uh, for that buyer to get qualified for mortgage. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was many extra steps. Yeah. Or they could go with the cash offer. That was someone that was willing to pay, you know, a lower price. However, less headaches. They wouldn't have to deal with anything. They, would, they didn't even have to come back to Massachusetts. So you met face to face, you presented both options, which I love, right? We, that's what we do at, you know, at the brokerage and, and at Whiteacre, where we present both options, right? That we're not mm -hmm. trying to trick anyone on like, hey, get the cash offer, you know, because we want a deal. Yeah. It's more of like, what works for the seller, right? So you presented both. What was their reaction? Like, what was the feedback that you got on that first meeting they were experienced actually in yeah. the business so yeah. they actually knew about you know the discounts and how properties get sold for cash offers they were a real estate investor in, in another state in another right? state yeah. yeah so they knew yeah you know there was something to gain from everyone yeah they didn't accept it right away yeah the cash offer actually yeah, yeah. so it took a little bit of negotiation you know okay. between here and there yeah. but they weighed on their, their options yeah and they decided to go with the cash offer even though it wasn't uh yeah as much as, as they, much they were hoping uh, for correct me if i'm wrong but you there were other offers right or at least other people looking at the property there were other people um, i just we never knew how much actually they right. offered uh, but again, I think it's more of not only convenience, but also the fact that, as you said, I followed up many times with the uh, seller. Yeah. I actually provided them with all the the paperwork, you know, either the cash offer or the listing presentation nice. um, and follow up many times. It wasn't a one time call. Yeah. It wasn't a one done deal. Um, many follow ups, many cold calls. But for this particular seller, yeah, as long yeah. as I stayed on top of it with all the transaction information that they needed it, then I think that provided them a more secure way of accepting our offer because they knew we were serious. So we ended up buying this condo for $105,000. Mm -hmm. It's a one bedroom, one bath condo in mm -hmm. Ulster County, Massachusetts. How did that happen, right? Listing was at 170, you know, high 170. Now we're getting for 105. I know they were looking for more cash uh, or more on the cash offer, right? What was that negotiation? If you can, you know, if you can tell me a little bit more. Well, it was one hundred. Our initial cash offer was one hundred thousand. Okay. And they wanted a one twenty-five. Okay. We went back and forth mm -hmm. with all the uh, things that we needed to get done, and they stayed a few days sitting on it, and then I followed up again, mm -hmm. and we were able to come up a little bit. I said we would come up a little bit if they were willing to come down. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, we'll come down to one fifteen. Okay. And I said, no, we'll <laughs> go up to 105. And that's the that's final. The that's, that's, what, that's what makes sense for everybody here. A yeah. uh, couple more days go by, then they call us back and they say, okay, we'll accept the 105. It's like a give and take a little bit. So we started at 100 to give us a little bit of room, yeah. right? We ended up at 105 and we're like, hey, this is final. So it was a win-win. I know the seller got a lot of value out of it. I, I remember when we closed, actually, we got a Google review from the seller complimenting Cat and, and you and you know the team for kind of making it so easy, right? Mm -hmm. She never came back, I believe, to Massachusetts for the closing or no, anything. Never did. So this deal, from the moment you signed it to when it closed, it took a while, right? Yes. How, how long was it? 
It, it took about six months. Six months from the moment you signed the offer with the seller to when we closed, it took six months. And it took six months because it went through the court system, right? So yeah. the court, regardless of if, if there is a will or not, right, for, for the person that passed away, they left a will or not, the court has to review all those documents, appoint the personal representative. In this case was the person that you were talking to, right? Mm -hmm. They were the personal representative of the estate and they were the one that sold us the property, but they had to go through the court systems first. Yeah, I feel like, you know, if you work with the right team and attorney, yeah. uh, it helps a lot. Yeah. Um, because the seller was under the impression that she was ready to sell. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, when we started getting to the process of the sale, our attorneys discovered that she was not ready. Right. So then we needed additional paperwork and the attorney needed to get into the court system and actually get everything ready for then we'd be able to sell. Right. The other thing to mention is, uh, remind me, actually, I, I'm not 100% sure. Did our attorney handle the probate? Yes, our attorney handled the probate, the sale uh, Everything. for both, both, uh, sides. both sides. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. The team members that we need to succeed mm -hmm. and that attorney is number one, right? Having a good attorney that knows exactly what to say to the seller, what it's needed, right? For, you know, after doing a title search, getting it to the closing, mm -hmm. you know, especially if it's a wholesale and a probate, like you, there's so many moving parts. So that's, that is a key team player. Give me some feedback of what worked, what didn't, what can we yeah. do better? It, it definitely works. Uh, cold calling works. Okay. <laughs> right. As much as I'm not very confident in myself when, in regards to cold calling, it works. It just takes time for you to get used to it. Yeah. Um, and takeaways, follow up yeah. as much as you can. Make sure you, you, you get your tasks in place. Work with the right team. Uh, work with you know, investors and also people that you have worked with in the past at least or someone trusted. And... Honestly, be transparent, you know, as much as you, you, you are that. there yeah. to offer the seller um, value. You're not there to try to pull their rug or, you know, yeah. to be sketchy or anything like that. Right. You're there to provide them value, options, let them choose That's the it. best option. 100%. Yep. No, I love that. Guys, I think this, I hope this is valuable. I mean, this has been something we haven't talked a lot after the closing, right? I, I know uh, we talk about, you know, our struggles with cold calling and, and, and this and that, but <laughs> It's, it's important to see this is real, it's a real deal, right? And we're gonna talk yeah. about the real numbers in a different app, you know, video, but anyone can get a deal like this, right? If, if we can do it, honestly, you know, it's just putting the time being consistent, you can get a great deal like this. Uh, come and join us, guys, come and join me and Kayan at, at the meetup. You, you usually join me all the time. Yeah. So <laughs> come and, and say hi to us. Uh, networking is, is why we do this. Actually, now that I'm sharing this, you came to our meetup before you joined the brokerage. Yes, yeah. that is correct. So Kayan used to come to our meetup, so we connected on a personal level at the meetup and then afterwards, but that's how we connected and then you are part of the team and now he's closing deals for us, right? Yeah. So guys, come join us, ask questions, network, learn from everybody and comment below if you have questions, right? There's a lot of stuff that we're talking about, but I don't know what's on your mind. I don't know your struggle, so comment below. I personally jump in and comment back and give you some feedback. Awesome, guys, that's a wrap. Catch you on the next one. All Thanks, right. man. This Thank you. <laughs>